Hi guys, welcome to my second Directory Apus tutorial. Um, I'm going to cover a couple of things that I missed in the last one. Um, more on listers, uh, some tiny buttons I missed, and then some of the um, modules that Directory Apus loads. We're also going to cover some libraries um, that improved Directory Apus out of the box. Um, and also a library that should have been installed but is actually missing. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I've not really changed anything, I don't think. Um, so just going to cover the lister in more detail. So if we just go through a few folders, if we double click on the the, the highlight lister, which is actually the source lister. If, if a list is highlighted, it's the source lister, and then the other one automatically becomes the destination lister. So that's now source, and the left side is now the destination. Um, if you double click it, it brings up all the parents and any assigns, multi assigns that, that we've set up. Um, and obviously, we can just double click it, and it'll take us back to where we was. Um, we can install a library that gives further functionality by right clicking and holding it down, though we've not installed that yet. Um, we didn't i didn't cover these four buttons here um so the b that's the buffer list so any directory that we go into um and come out of if we click on the b it gives us a list um, we can configure how many um how many how many directories we've visited are listed in here um, and pressing the right mouse button will clear it so there's not nothing. Um, the R allows you to reselect. Um, I'm not 100% sure of how that works. Yeah, I'm not going to try to show how that sure works. Um, but right clicking rescans the, 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 the directory. Um, S allows you to select. So if we go to DH1, you'll see that we've installed some modules. Um, and in here, some are hard, some are LZX, and some are just not compressed at all. Um, so if we press the S, we can use wildcast to select what we need to select, and then do what we want with it, move it. Um, pressing the right mouse button on S brings up your device list. Um, a launches an AREX command, um, which we're not going to touch just yet. Um, but if we press, if we go into a directory and we press the right mouse button on A, it will give us a directory list uh, as, a, as, as a tree, which is quite useful. Um, however, don't do what I did yesterday and set up your main PC hard drive as accessible from within the Amiga environment and then trying to get a directory tree. It takes a while, even at this kind of speed. Okay, so so that's pretty much what I didn't cover yesterday that I should have done. Now, some of the other things I didn't cover, um, so I like the disk copy. Um, now, the thing is, is with these commands, Okay, these are actually modules that are located here. Dopus disk, Dopus icon, Dopus print. Dopus, Dopus disk covers this copy format and install. Um, Dopus icon will give us our icon info um, box. So Dopus icon brings up this one. And then Dopus print brings up the print icon, which I will show you now by reading something, clicking print, or not clicking print, oh, it's better with a picture, I'll, sh I'll show you later. Um, you, you can pretty much bring up a print um, requester. There we go. So you bring up a print requester, um, and you know, obviously you can, you can print to file as well, um, which is useful if you have some outputs um, that, that just literally open in here. So for example, um, double clicking a Lahar archive, um, it opens in a, in the Dark Drivers reader. 
uh, clicking print, you can output it to a printer um, or output to a file. Uh, will you use this on your real media? You might if you've got a, if you've got a you know, dot matrix or, or a more modern printer running, though you likely won't. You'll just print to a file if need be. Um, and that pretty much is about it. Now, one of the things that um, we didn't that, we, that we're going to cover are music playing in the background, um, viewing pictures, that kind of thing. I've not put any pictures on, but I will. Um, however, I've put some music on. Now, I actually created a play mod button, which I'm going to delete. So I was just testing. Okay, so if we double click a module, it literally just loads it up. If we click play on a module, we get rubbishy sound. So we go into the configuration, click buttons, and we can create a button. Um, I'll cover this in more detail um, a bit later. Now that, hopefully that will work. So it doesn't play the mod. Okay. Now the reason it hasn't played the mod is because Directory Opus is actually needs um, a library that hasn't been installed. Um, now what it needs, I'll show you what it is. So on Snoop DOS, on Directory Opus, if we look at the Snoop DOS output, um, pop up menu library, we'll come back to. Um, screen notifier library we'll come back to but the one we're interested in is Enova music dot library now this should have been installed but it hasn't been um, and the reason it hasn't been is because it wasn't with the distribution uh, however it is with older distributions so we need to source it and install it now we can find it um, within the Deutsche Opus for Tosec um, release if you've got that. Um, if not, then just drop me a message and, I'll, and you know, I can send you the library. However, I'll just go ODF. Okay, so in here we've got, I've got Deutsche Opus ADS already set up. Um, I'll double click it and it'll click on files and in libs here, we should have in every music library. Okay, so what we need to do is mount this drive so it's now mounted as, as a disk. Um, so we run direct drapers. Go to the direct drapers folder um, and we're going to copy the Innova Music library across. Uh, we might as well copy a power pack of libraries well it adds a little bit more functionality uh, for direct opus to read power pack compressed files um, automatically so we'll just copy them across um, and we'll then quit direct opus and relaunch it and hopefully in every music library will now be found there you go it's not showing it's failed which means it's been found so hopefully now our modules will play There is, however, no way to stop the module because we haven't set up a stop button. We can place, press the play button with nothing selected and, and it will stop the music until we get into you know, configuring buttons properly and, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but what we are going to do is hopefully have some music running in the background. Um, hopefully it won't be, you'll be able to hear my voice still. Um, so what we'll do is Okay, so we'll just take some meds. Now this one isn't going to work because it's actually a hard compress, it's just not set up. Um, but we'll take some of these. There's a lot there. I just need to make sure that that's 
set up to do all fans. Okay, now we play mod. We'll just go through each one individually. Yeah, don't 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 do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for for, for mods. However, the direct tropus in over music library doesn't recognise every module. It covers um sound tracker, pro tracker. Uh let's have a look. Give me a second. Then you can't find the command menu. Menu. Um, it, it does play most, but it's not. It's not going to cover some of the newer formats, and also anything where it's got um, certain commands in, it causes direct traffic to choke. Um, so yeah. So I should turn the volume down on my headset because that music was very loud. And we're going to play this, which is quite a famous mod, and hopefully you can hear my voice over the top of it. Um, so now we're going to look at the, the configuration program. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything that we can we cover here. We'll install the other libraries in a bit um, and see what they do. But I just want to go through the config. Um, so this is the main configuration main screen. You can set it back to default, um, which doesn't do everything. Over here we've got our buttons. Um, again, I will come back to this probably on the next video, depends how long this one was on for. Um, drives, so so this screen lists all your drives. Now if you click get drives, it will get all the drives. Um, um, you can add them, remove them, you can clear everything. And you can delete your banks. Um, so what you do, you click on it, and then obviously you've got the name. So ADO, that is the GoADF. So we could just rename that to that. That tells me it's go ADF, and that's the path to it. And then that's a sample of what the bottom will look like. So we can change colors. Um, so we might want that set up like that. Um, and then it's going to be set up there. So floppy drives, we might want blue. This one will keep black. Um, uh, this is your hard drive again it's actually the device name not you know you could you could just rename it to system or workbench or you, know, you don't have to have the training code on or anything like that it will just work um, this one I can just rename to so that's my PC drive um, there's your RAM disk and then there's just your signs um, down here I'll show you the get drive the copy drive click it it says highlighted you can then click on a button and it copies it somewhere else um, copy bank again it copies the whole stack of, of six to the new to the new bank swap bank in fact we'll come back to that uh, swap drive we can swap them around for example Delete drive or delete individual drives. Delete bank or delete an entire bank. Um, sort bank or sort it. I'm assuming it'll sort it A to Z. Um, and then we've got at the top we've got paint mode. So highlight paint mode. Click on a button. Even how paint mode works. There we go. Select what you want. Just click on it and then you can turn paint mode off again. Um, and, and yeah, that's about it. So if we go out and go back, we can now set up how we set them up. So yeah, it's, quite, it's quite useful. 
Um, we can put a scroll bar on, on, on the bank, which I'll show you how to do that as we work through the configuration program. File types we will come back to. Um, this is probably a video of its own, um, as you know, we can make direct shapers identify files automatically. Um, so LaHa, it identifies it from the file name. Um, however, we're going to change it so it identifies it from its ID. Um, that way, we're not going to get a situation like this one where it's not got a lot identifier at the end file name but it's got the the, the Laha header there um, so you know we'll set that up uh, probably later hotkeys um, you can create hotkeys um, again your hotkey name um, and then you can tell it what to do like this all boils down to, to the same kind of thing as as you know creating buttons and creating menus um, it will do the same thing it will just work on a hotkey as opposed to a button or a menu um, which brings us to menus uh, you can have five menus and each menu you can have up to 20 different um, different commands um, so I think back in the day um, that one for me I think was quarterback um, you know and I'd have had you know, the various different quarterback tools and things like that. This one might have been virus and I'd have had different virus checkers, that kind of thing. Um, but you can, you know, anything with a tilde, I believe, has got a shortcut. No, it hasn't. Back to what that is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, again, menus are set up the same way as buttons. Uh, this is where we're going to folks on the, you know the bulk of this video is going to be um, in here okay so this is how operations and how they work so when copying you know we can check that there's enough space uh, before copying and we can set the archive bit of the source after finishing which means it basically when you come to copy back later you can compare the archive bit and see that oh, actually the archive bit has been set on this one is you know it's it's more recent um, date stamp protection bits and archive bit are copied too um, and the comments copied again you can just turn them on or off um, if the file already exists you can just always replace never replace ask um, or only replace older files again that works on the date stamp so it's not foolproof um, your date format is here so you can select you know, how you want it depending on where you are in the world or how you read dates um, you can have 12 hour clock or 24 hour clock which i prefer you can substitute names so uh, you know in your when you're listing files um, and your dates here it will say today tomorrow yesterday instead of doing an actual date for example uh, delete so you know should, should you be asked ask before comments to delete yes should you ask for the files yes deleting non empty directories yet um, and this one if, if the delete protection bit is set and that's not ticked it won't let you delete the file Take that, it'll ignore uh, the file. Again, it's just a safety feature. Error checking, we can enable DOS error requesters and directory open error requesters, which is you know the E button uh, and you know entering what the error is. General, uh, click M, click drag, that's when you click on the source window and then immediately click on the on the destination window. If click M click is set up within the file type, it will conduct whatever it is. So for example, um, I'll show you. So this is click and click which goes to a RAM drive click click that's click and click and it unpacks it into the destination um, you can turn that off um, I found in the past that sometimes I've accidentally you know unpacked something when I didn't want to etc um, display info I can't remember what that does let check the manual So what are we in operation? General. And then display info. Okay, 
Okay, so basically just displays the file info in the status bar. So just have a look. So just here. However, you might not want that. Uh, obviously, it, it takes away the fact that you can see how many files and, uh, and whatever you've got listed. And to be fair, it's pretty useless. Uh, file double click. Um, if you double click a file, it will interrogate the file and try and load or use whatever apps assigned to it. Uh, window slider activate uh, whenever you click on a slider um, or an arrow, it activates. Um, file master like parent. Not entirely sure what that does. Um, I'm, I'm assuming it, it displays the, the list like the file master might. Um, don't ask before quit. Uh, dive trips will just quit. Um, and single middle mouse makes it up to select the lister. So um, I've got WinUA to, to exit out and use the middle mouse button, so it's not going to work for me. But that's what that does. Um, icons, you can create icon directions automatically. You can form all actions and icons as well, which I would recommend you keep ticked. Um, and you can select icons. Now, I don't like that. Um, however, just to show you how it works. Um, whenever you click something that's got an icon, the icon's automatically selected. Um, some people would find it useful. I personally think it's annoying. List format. This is where we define what each list looks like. So you can, you know, the left window and the right window are independent. Um, this box here, um, this tells us what is available to have in a lister. And this tells us what we've actually got in the lister. So we can, the tick denotes what's going to sort by. Um, however, you can you can remove um, I'm not entirely sure if I remove it. I'd have them all selected anyway. Um, just go back to the manual. should be a clear button but oh, I don't see it and a reset button oh well, there it is so clicking clear clears it clicking reset sets it back to default um, okay so this tells gives us our displayed length in all versions like Tropus you're limited to 107 characters in the file name um, so hence why we've got the new one length of the file comment and length of the file type um, show size in currently the size is shown in bytes however you can force it to show in kilobytes megabytes and gigabytes um, which I will have to select uh, entry separation you can have directories first files first or mixed um, i always have directory at the top um, and then you've got your left and right windows and you can reverse the sort and that's about it really uh, update um, this gives us progress indicators and things like that so whenever we're copying files we can click that and it will give us a progress indicator to slow it down a little bit, but in WinUE, won't make a difference. Um, and press press the files left just to file the file in the status bar, so it will just appear over here as opposed to in the middle. Um, the doctor window will scroll to follow the operation and up, update free disk space on the fly as opposed to when it's finished. Um, 
after we've finished we can refresh the directory using start notify um, and this should also work if for example you copy a file into a directory from say workbench and go back to direct opus having that tick it should automatically spot the changes um, redraw more than a quarter of a page um, if you move more than a quarter page in either direction of the lister it will redraw it um, and update lister this view slider while scanning um, turn it off speed up slightly but you know that's about it uh, so let's have a look at what I've changed so you know when copying just copy no it's, it's just too quick let's just copy everything let's slow down you can see everything's left justified here is too quick okay so that's the operation next we've got screen um, and we can configure how direct opus for um, locks so for example arrows we can have you know we can determine which arrow we want to modify um, so that's the arrow that's going to be up the middle we can adjust the size of it make it fatter or thinner um, make the arrow smaller or larger um, me, I tend to always go for super slim. Um, we have the arrows at the bottom, arrows on the outside, or an arrow each end. Um, I always have the arrows on the inside on that one. Uh, this is the scroller. This is the scroller um, that sits below the windows. Um, and again, it's just the same thing. And the same with that, just the same thing. Um, colors. So we can select colors, but we can also change how direct Travis looks. Um, so we can go through you know, the status bar. There's two ways to do it. Go through the selector, um, or we'll just click it. And again, we can change everything. So you can change the status bar to have a blue back, blue text on a yellow background, for example. Um, and this is where all that garish stuff comes in. That, you know, all these garish configs that you might have seen. Um, on various forums or, or whatever um, but you can literally modify everything um, fonts again you can you can modify your fonts um, so clock memory fonts this tells you where it is um, I've not really installed any extra fonts um, but yeah you can so for example, the clock memory, if we go back and look now, it's got a crazy font. Um, so you, you can do that for you know, just about everything. Um, I'll just stick with Topaz for now. But again, when you're in um, RTG, install some be better fonts uh, and you know set that that way. Um, and here we can select in general we can you know to the top bottom right the tiny buttons on or off um, so they're gone now I leave them on simply because that's where I'm going to everything button bank sliders the button bank sliders on our sliders on um, which inc should include the drives um, display status text and title bar again instead of just in the status bar it will be selected display in the title bar Requests can be moved, turn that off, and they just sit in the middle of the screen. Um, indicate button has right, right mouse button. That gives the little dog ears. So if we just go out now and have a look, we've got little dog ears on some buttons, which indicates you've got a right mouse button function underneath. So if you press the right mouse button, um, again, we can turn that off. Why you would turn that off? Not a clue. Um, but yeah, so now you can't see if it's got a second command behind it um, and new look sliders gives the workbench two look sliders as opposed to the black ones screen mode um, I've got set to workbench clone but again anything is, is doable you can have more colors um, and then obviously when you get the palette I don't, I don't 
but I don't know why the config opus has moved out here. Um, but yeah, so in the palette you can you can adjust the palette, uh, have it what you want, um, and some different, um, yeah, some different palettes to choose from. Um, so workbench, we're, we're cloning. You can have more colours. Half height screen. Um, it makes the screen half the height. Why you do that? I don't know. Um, I suppose if you open it on on, on if you if you if you open it on directory opus uh, on workbench, sorry. Um, so now we're on workbench as a window. Um, but yeah, I like to sleep on its own. Um, sliders. We can move the sliders left. Right, or leave them in the middle. I tend to leave them in the middle. Um, and the last option is the system option. Um, so we've got Amiga DOS. So when we open a new shell window, we can give it a title, and then that's the command um, that tells it, you know, what, what it's done. So when you run something and you specify you want, you know, shell output or don't show its output, you know, that's where it sets the size and what it's going to display. Um, you have a startup script, which is a shell startup. Uh, which oh, I'm going to guess is executed when over starts and you start the priority. Um, clocks, so in the memory bar at the top, you can select a memory monitor, CPU monitor, date and time. We can have the same when iconified. Um, uh, turn off window and app icon. Again, you can show free spaces, bytes or kilobytes, chip or fast or CNF. Show free spaces, bytes, kilobytes, again when iconified, and then same again. So, yeah. Directories, this is how many buffers you can have per lister um, so for example at the minute we've got 10 you can set that to whatever you want theoretically depending on memory um, always move to an empty buffer um, and re rechange buffers again when something changes um, it will refresh um, you can search the buffers um, again I don't really know huge what that does um, So it buffers per window lets you specify. Um, always move to an empty buffer causes doubt jobs to, to use an empty buffer whenever a new directory is read. A new directory is read whenever you enter a path in the directory field, double click or click and click on a directory name. Um, so click and click again, left window, right window, or right window to left window. Um, when, a, when a buffer directory window is shown, so with a re rechange buffers, um, it will check the direction on the disk, see if it's changed. If it has, this will cause a reread of the window. Um, search buffers on. Um, it will search for the parent or root um, whenever certain whenever certain parent or root commands are chosen. Um, if it exists in the buffer, then it will read it from the buffer. If not, then it will just retrieve it from memory. Um, again, this will just save disk access. So if I was to click on parent, um, it wouldn't reread the disk. It just load the buffer. Um, nothing's changed, so. Uh, the miss flags, auto disk change, um, it senses when a disk in any drive has been changed. So if you eject a disk in DFO and put in another disk, it will automatically pop up a request asking if you want to load it in the left or right window. Um, auto disk load is, is very similar, just a text when a disk is inserted, not just ejected. Expand path names will expand the path name to the full size of the path name. Um, so if you click on an assign, so you click on C, it will come up, you know, system C or workbench C, whatever. Um, use XOR. It will use XOR to read the directories rather than the old old commands. Um, it can be slightly faster than the old method, but in WinUE, you see how quick it is. Um, and again, you show space. Um, on the disk as bytes free, megabytes free, blocks free, or percentage of space free. Um, it's a shame you can't have that, you know, megabytes free and then percentage of space. Um, hotkey, this is just a hotkey to activate or not activate direct shapers. Um, to icon if I want that or, or, or not. Click and sample button, let you test it. Um, icons, you can select default icons. So when you create an icon, you can tell it what icon to use. So if you click on it, um, so default draw icon you can just go and find an icon um, so say for example expansion info that will now be called 
default icon um, and the projects the projects default icon is is kind of like the same kind of thing um, and you can set it for any any file type you create you should be able to be able to add an icon to it um, modules uh, these are these are the modules that are external supports so from big opus disk copy format and installer one icon info print and print dire so they're the four modules i showed you earlier uh, a tick indicates it's preloaded when power starts um, you probably unless you've got loads of memory and a slow amiga you don't need that show pattern um, you can you can specify files to hide so you, for example you could hide all icon files uh, or you can hide files that have got the hidden bit set um, again will you use it probably not um, start up you can you can you know when you start up you can tell it what to read and any a scripts you want to kick off um, when you start so for me that would be ram disk there would be perfect um, and then we've got a view and play um, there's a lot in here and you know we've not got to pictures yet because i've not actually um, looked for any yet um, however i'll put some across um, so in view and play black background between pictures so when you view select five six ten hundred pictures you can show a black background between the pictures as opposed to reshowing the dark shape of the screen each time start animations pause so when you're watching an animation um, and dot anim file most commonly it will start pause then you press the left mouse button to start it going eight bits per gun color um, selecting that um, will give you the agate eight bit per gun color however it will make um, non agate images look a little bit darker and duller um, it will automatically you can have that to automatically show the, pick the best screen and what it thinks from the metadata within the file um, show delay and fade delay so it can fade out in two seconds and that's the figures there show delay how long it takes to fade in um, sound player so you can turn off the audio filter and, and you can loop on a double click and then the text viewer uh, again you set the tab size there um, you can have borders uh, or you can view in a window um, uh, and, and that's about it so let me just see if I can find some pictures to view now I'm just going to do IFF pictures for the time IFF RBM because anything else I need setting up just looking for anything that's on in Okay, so I've copied some images over. Let's have a look. So I've got these ready set up, but there's in them yet. Okay, so double clicking on an image will show the image. Um, and again, press the space bar and it'll give you some information on the image. Um, you can click to print it if you want. Um, not touch sure why I've done that. Because you can't actually import it in when you just reboot. 
be easy. Right. Selecting all the images um, and clicking show. Again, fade up and fade down, left mouse button. Um, oh, something I drew probably about 1991. 1990, copy it from the hot space cover. So these are literally just what I've copied. Um, if it's bigger than can be displayed. Okay. The space was about to tell you how big it is. Obviously it's confined to whatever. Um, screen where Dutch Shepherd thinks it wants to show. Um, so we can start with 8 bits per gun colour and we can pick the best screen mode. Launch them again. And hopefully some of those other ones. To be fair, they probably won't actually um, fill the screen. Yeah, it's not. Um, so our keyboard shortcuts for the viewer. Um, and pressing right mouse button just cancels it without showing um, everything else. All right, guys, that concludes this second tutorial. Um, in the next one, we're actually going to start covering um, this kind of stuff and you know setting up buttons um, to do what you want. Um, so yeah, so thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.